Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to Lesson 20 of PHP Programming. And today we're going to look at two commands. We're going to take a look at a for loop and shuffle. And you're going to find shuffle uh, a very useful method in PHP. So we're going to start off by using the range command that we used last time. And just recall, a range creates basically a sequence of numbers. And in this particular case, we're going to go from 0 to 100 in steps of 10. And once we've done it, we'll put it into array my array. We'll print that array so you can see that, do a break, and then what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle that array. And what shuffle does, very simple command. You just put an array of items into shuffle, and you run the command. It just shuffles them, reorders them, randomizes them. And then we're going to print that out and confirm that indeed that we did shuffle them. So let's go ahead and run the program. And once again, we are on lesson 20, for loop PHP. Let's go ahead and run the program. Make sure you point to that in your run configurations. Once you've done that, hit run. And there's our results. And so in the first case, we have 0, 10, 20, 30, and so on, all the way up to 100. And the second case, they've been randomized just using a simple shuffle method, 70, 40, 80. Now, if I run that command again, see they're different. You know, you get 20, 40, 70, and run it again. And it's different because it basically just shuffles or randomizes the array every time. Very useful method, and we'll use that as we move forward. You can imagine you might be shuffling a deck of cards, for example, and we'll actually show you how to do that. Now, the next method I want to take a look at is the for loop. Very important method in PHP. Basically, the way the for loop works is it has three pieces. It has an initial, a condition, and an increment, and a statement. So it's very similar to the while loop, but in this case, you have a few extra pieces. And I like the for loop a lot. I actually use it a lot in programming. And I want to say, once again, with the for loop, if you only have one statement, you don't need a curly bracket. But if you have more than one statement, then you definitely want to put the curly brackets in there to group statements together. So here's an example of a for loop right here. I have my initial variable. I need to declare that variable. That's the variable I'm going to iterate over. Then you have your condition, basically. It's going to iterate until, for example, count is less than or equal to 10. And in the for loop itself, you're going to increment. So in a sense, it's a while loop all put together in one. I have a condition here to check something. I want to check to see if the count is less than 10. And if, and if it's less than 10, I'm going to add a comma after the count. And if it's not, I'm just going to echo out count. So this should give me a string of numbers starting with 0 uh, with commas all the way up to 10. And the last number does not have a comma because in the if statement you go to uh, the uh, echo without a comma. So let's run it and see if it works. And there you go, 0 through 10, no comma at the end. And that's how a for loop works. Basically, once again, let me review that. Initial, that's basically the variable you're going to declare with its initial value that you're going to iterate over some condition that's going to keep iterating until that condition is finished. And then your increment is right in the for loop as opposed to the while loop where you actually had to put it inside. Typically with a for loop, you don't run the risk of having an infinite loop like you might with a while loop since you actually are forced to declare everything within the uh, loop itself. All right, let's go ahead and apply all this. Let's apply the shuffle that we learned previously to, and the for loop to create a random name generator. So I actually want to create a random name generator, and I actually pulled this from uh, IBM's game site. They actually have a little game, 30 tips of PHP programming games. And this is a random uh, number generator. It basically has two arrays. It has a, um, has a male name array and a last name array. So basically, I'm just going to take two arrays, male and last, and I'm going to shuffle those array, and then I'm going to print them out using a for loop. So in the next piece right here, I create my arrays, and then I just put a shuffle on them. And then I'm going to print them out uh, just using the for loop. And so I've created these arrays. And I'm just going to use iterate, start with uh, initializing i equal to 0. Going to iterate until it's less than or equal to 3. And going to increment by 1 every time. So what I'm doing in this program is I'm shuffling the two names. Then I have my for loop. My initial condition is 0. And then I iterate i until it's less than or equal to 3. And each time I go through the loop, I iterate by 1. So that's what that means. I'm going to go ahead and take the first array, take the zeroth value of that, and go through 3, and the last value, and go through 3, and concatenate it with a space between the two. And then I'm going to have a break. So I actually should see four names, 0, 1, 2, and 3, because we started at 0. So let's run the program, see if that's what it does. Indeed, I get four names. And let's go ahead and uh, run it again, see if we randomize. And you can see each time we click, we are randomizing names. So that's really all there is to for loop and using shuffle. They're very useful methods, and we'll be using them a lot as we continue to code. Uh, go ahead and download the code from the website and uh, enjoy coding. And we're going to do four each loops next. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.